Hello guys, this is going to be a video explaining how to overclock your graphic card. This video is going to pretty much go down specifically to the HD7850. Now with the HD7850 with a proper overclock, you're able to push this card up towards the uh, HD7950 and GTX 580 performance levels. But at stock clock, the HD7850 is roughly about the same performance as a GTX 570, which are very powerful cards. Now, um, this HD7850 is possibly, I think, amongst the top or the best bang for your buck graphics card right now. Uh, it's, it retails for about 240 to 250 bucks. Um, you can get a, even you can, you can also get an aftermarket cooling unit for that price as well on Newegg. Now, the GTX 570, which is pretty much equivalent to the performance, is about 270, 260 something bucks. And the GTX 570 also uses more power as opposed to the GT, I mean the HD7850, which only uses one six pin connector and uses very less power. And it runs cooler, the 7850 also runs cooler than the GTX 570. So you also get a newer technology with the 7850 with the uh, PCI Express 3.0 capabilities and also two gigs of virtual RAM. So what you see in front of you right here is a simple overclocking utility for graphic cards. This is one of the many ones that you can find. The others are like Sapphire Tricks, MSI Afterburner, and other various programs like this. But this one right here is my favorite. So what you see on the left over here is basically a monitor um, gadget or utility that is in, that is with GPU tweak as well. So what this does is it shows you what your graphic card temperature was, your, the usage percentage, the voltage that is being um, applied to it for that given situation, the uh, fan duty and percentage. So 27% of the fan um, total RPM speed, the GPU clock, the memory clock, the memory usage out of the 2 gigahertz, I mean 2 gigabytes that I have, and that is about it. So the good thing about this, it goes back as far as 3 minutes prior to what is right here right now. So if it's 434 right now, it'll show you what your card was doing from 431 and up. So this is very good if you quickly alt tab out of a game or you just finish a benchmark or whatever and you want to see what your graphics card um, and, and what in what conditions that it was running at. So if you want to actually test the cooling method that you have, test the uh, what how intensive a certain program is, various other things like that to give you a better idea of how your graphic card is running. So basically by right clicking, it will just give you like a stagnant information on that specific time frame right there as you can see. So over here is basically the main part of the graphic utility program. Right here, you can adjust your GPU clock, which is basically how fast your um, graphics card will pretty much process the graphical information. A faster GPU clock will give you better frames per second. A lower GPU clock will give you less frames per second. It's pretty much self-explanatory. The GPU voltage here, it the more voltage that you give, the more stable the, uh, the graphics card can run at a certain frequency. But this right here is where you can kill your graphics card. So don't worry guys, don't don't X out of this video saying I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna overclock my graphics card anymore. But these programs they pretty much max it out. They they allow you to max out the voltage to the safest max voltage. So this the safest max voltage that you can apply to most, if not all, graphics cards is about 1.25 or 1.225 volts. You can flash the BIOS of your graphics card and allow it to unlock itself up to like 1.3 or even further, but you do risk frying your card that way. The memory clock here the faster the memory clock is pretty much how fast you can transfer transfer like the textures back and forth if the textures are being held in the uh, r the virtual RAM and how fast can it be transferred back and forth this does have an effect on um frame rate but not as significant as a GPU clock so GPU clock is the most important in terms of the overall graphics cards performance the fan speed here you can also control to be auto where the circuit board senses the temperature of the chip the higher chip goes, the, the circuit board will automatically adjust the fan speed to accommodate for those temperature levels. Manual, you could just set a, um, a fixed speed. And so as soon as you as soon as you click the uh, the, the uh, profile button, which automatically overclocks the card to the given send that you put, it'll automatically jump start the fan speed to that percentage, and it'll keep it at there at all times. Or you could put user define, which allows you to set a specific fan speed for the specific temperature. What I do is I just leave it on auto because I feel that the uh, the PCB's predefined temperature controls and fan settings are adequate enough for me. Also, 
in terms of in Celsius, the maximum that you ever want a graphic card to ever reach is 90 degrees Celsius. Anything more than that, you really need to just, um, if you overclock the card, you really need to either get an aftermarket cooler or underclock it a bit because anything over 90, 90 degrees Celsius is very harmful to the card. Now over here to the right is a pretty much a laid out information on your graphics card. It tells you pretty much everything you need to know. It also tells you the current clock. It tells you the default clock. So the current clock is basically the default clock. So if I was to click 1, which is where my overclocking set is for my specific 7850 is, if I click that, it'll go to the settings that I have. And then you're going to see it right here in the GPU clock that it's now overclocked. But it won't be really overclocked in terms of as you see right now because it's just in it's basically running in 2D mode you're basically in the desktop not doing anything significant so if you were to launch any kind of in um 3D rendering program or video games or any kind of benchmarking then it will jump start to the the clock that you put so let me just launch MSI con um combustor and show you guys father just launch a quick GPU burning all right so what you're gonna see is you can see the monitoring right here is telling you that the uh, the GPU is now running at these settings you see this, the temperature is actually increasing the usage is increasing to 98 percent the GPU voltage has increased to what I set right here the fan duty is increasing as well because the PCB automatically increases the fan to, to depending increases or decreases depending on the um the GPU's um, current temperature you can see the GPU clock is what I set right here, 1225. You can go down. So the memory clock is what I set. So basically, when you're running any kind of intensive graphical programs or benchmarking, then the actual graphics card will kick into the uh, the overclocking settings that you put. But as soon as I X this out, and the graphics card goes back into a 2D or pretty much a laid back idle state, you can see that everything just drops back down, and the graphic card pretty much underclocks itself to save power, um, utilize less energy basically, and run cooler because really there's no point in having the graphics card running at such a high clock in a 2D mode. This is really not much for the graphics card to render. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to show you the the performance increase that you can get from an overclocked graphic card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Unigen having DX11 benchmark which is a very popular benchmark and these are the most popular settings for 1080p. I'm going to run that with the default clock first. Pretty much, I'm going to have it sped up, so you don't, you guys are going to want to see the whole entire benchmarking. So I'm going to speed it up, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it again with the uh, default clock. I mean, not the default clock, my overclock settings, which are which is this, and I'm going to show you guys the FPS increase that you're going to see. Basically, with an overclocked graphics card, you basically pull you you pulled more power, f more performance from it for pretty much no cost at all. So now I'm going to show you guys the uh, the benchmarks. 